Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Christ's death revealed in me is the title of this devotion. I find this still one of the greatest wonders of the Christian faith that you would not be able to find in any other religion on earth. While many religions demand stringent devotions and everything, none of them can give you the power of Christ's death to manifest and live inside of you, as what I shared yesterday, your freedom, his death, my freedom. That that death of Christ is so powerful and perfect that it utterly liberates you from this lower nature that would seek to keep pulling you down into that horrific pit of despair, abandonment, hopelessness, and feeling of like I can never change. And that force of, of ugliness, of sin, is so forceful. But praise God, Jesus died to sin. Romans 6 verse 10, once and for us all. Oh, the death he died, he died once to sin for us all. And that is so glorious to get this revelation that the death that he died, he died for us. He who was without sin became sin for us in that he died. And he took upon himself the wrath of God and fully, fully satisfied the demands of the law that says the wages of sin is death. And the death he died. You see, it wasn't just a quick accident that it, it never kind of pulled his consciousness into the situation like me. In 1978, I had a car accident. I had a head-on collision. Within a split second before I knew what happened, I was in a coma and I was dying. I mean, I, I never was conscious of what happened it, because it happened so swiftly when over 100 miles an hour I had a head-on collision. And friends, the death he died, he completely drank what the Bible says, the cup of that cup of God's wrath. He suffered the pains of death, the Bible says. He suffered it. He completely satisfied the law and the spirit by which Jesus died. We read about in Hebrews 9, 10, 9, 14. The spirit by which Jesus died was perfectly pleasing to God that in his suffering, our death, he perfectly gave himself to the Father in perfect love for the Father and the Father's perfect love for us. You'll find this in, Gal in Ephesians 5, verse 1 and 2, and, and in, here in Hebrews 9, 14, that the spirit by which he offered himself to the Father was his demonstration of love for the Father and was the Father's demonstration of love for us as sons of man. And that power of full surrender to the Father, of full self-denial, laying off self, self-exaltation, self-pleasing, self-seeking, that he completely destroyed in his death. And that power of his death, he reveals in us. It is the heavenly Father who takes Christ's death and through the circumstances of our life begins to reveal his death in us as much as we can take it. And the reason I say this, because if the Father would reveal too much of Christ's death in us, we couldn't bear it. We think, oh God, why have you forsaken me? Oh God, what have I done wrong? Oh God, why don't you forgive? We couldn't bear the pain of it. So the Heavenly Father knows how much of that death to reveal in us, that's why we die with Christ daily, the Bible talks about. It's that circumstances of life that the Father works through to bring that death in us and liberate us from self-seeking, self-serving, self-pleasing. 
when Jesus had been glorified, he appeared to John the Beloved when he was in his upper 80s, maybe close to 100 years of age, on the Isle of Patmos. And Jesus appeared to him and said to him in Revelations 1 verse 17, when I saw him, when I saw Jesus, John says, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore, amen. I have the keys of Hades, the abode of the dead and of death. Don't be afraid, he says. I'm he who lives and was dead and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Jesus Christ revealed himself in these two parts of his wonderful redeeming work to John. He revealed himself alive from the dead. He revealed himself dead. He says, I was dead. Behold, I was dead. He gives John that revelation that he was dead, but he's alive forevermore. He conquered death. He destroyed completely his power over man because he was a man. And now as the son of God and the son of man, he is able to help you to reveal his death in you. The Apostle Paul <coughs> had a meeting with the Lord Jesus after Jesus had been glorified. And you read about this in the book of Acts. And then Paul speaks about it at different points throughout scripture. And one of the things that the Apostle Paul shows in one of the times he's speaking about this is in, Gale in Philippians chapter three. He said, you know, if anyone can boast in who they are, I surely can. I mean, am I a Jew? Yes, from the tribe of Benjamin. Did I obey the, the law of Moses? Oh, I was perfect in obedience to it. Was I committed to it? I was a Pharisee of Pharisees. I was most committed to it. Yet all of these things that brought me such great honor as a human being, I have now come to realize is one big combined heap of loss, even of dung in comparison to the priceless privilege of knowing Christ. He is saying, uh, he is not saying it's worthless to obey the law, it's worthless to be a Pharisee, it's worthless. He said, no, all of these things were gained to me, but compared to what I now have in Jesus, it is worthless, yes. What I now have Jesus in Jesus is so great. And there were two things that he shows in verse 10. Let me just pick it up there in Philippians chapter three, verse 10, okay? There was two things that we see in his knowing Christ that he wanted to experience within himself. He says in verse 10, 10, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, listen, and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. So the two things that Paul wanted to experience within himself through his relationship with Jesus was that resurrection life that he exerts over and in those who believe upon him, making them alive with him and the power of death to self, the power of liberation from the self-seeking, self-serving, self-pleasing life, that liberating, where you're completely liberated from it, you are dead to self. It's no longer I that live it, he would say in Galatians 2 verse 20. But the life that I have in this earthen body of flesh I have by faith through the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. 
you see, the revelation of Christ's death in us is what gives us such incredible freedom to live for God, gives us freedom to please God. What holds us back, friends, is self. Our worst enemy is self. Jesus said it in such a simple way when he said, what would any man give in exchange for his own soul? He who seeks to save himself, who seeks to save self, will lose himself. But he who loses self for my sake will find life. Jesus made it so simple. And friends, this is the power that God would have you come to know. Let me just give you one little thought in closing, okay, to not make this devotion too long. But you would think the more you have revelation of your new life in Christ, the more you will not experience the pain of the old. And while there is a side to that that is true, there is a side to it that is not. The more you begin to live the heavenly life that comes into you from Jesus Christ and you live in the conscious knowledge of it by the blood of Christ cleansing your heart from consciousness of sin to serve the living God and you now serve him in the newness of life in Christ. You now serve him by worshiping him in spirit and truth, by living in communion with him through the spirit of life in Christ in you, that new life giving way by which we draw near with boldness and you now live in that, you would think, okay, I will never have an issue with self anymore. But that is actually not true because you still live in this earthly body. You still live in this Adamic body, the body of Adam that we receive from Adam. And in this body is the law of sin, the nature of sin. And the only way to live free from that nature of sin is by the life of Jesus Christ within but you still have this body. And I have come to discover that that is such an excellent opportunity for us to come to know the humility and meekness, gentle, submitted heart of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because you can then sometimes be so overwhelmed with the pains of your fallen human nature and then you say, Lord, if it wasn't for your mercy and grace, how could I ever live this new life? I don't deserve this. I only have this because you keep giving it to me. I only live this new life, but childlike faith in your love for me that you keep giving it me who don't deserve it because I'm just as sinful as any other man but I'm no longer living to please self in sin because now you are living within and keeping me from it. You're my savior, my keeper. And you just have this humility about yourself because you know the life you live is not your own. So with that in mind, right? I'm in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse nine and 10. And I'll read it from the classic Amplified because what was happening here is the devil, who's cruel and mean, was constantly reminding Paul how human he still was when he was enjoying such a holy, heavenly life in his relationship with Jesus Christ. And Paul, being reminded of how human he was, he said, Lord, please, Lord, please, I'm so fed up with this self, I'm so done with it, Lord, but okay, the only way for me to be here on earth is to be in this body and to serve you by your spirit in me. But this body of death, Lord, makes me feel wretched, as he says in Romans 7, 28. Help me, Lord. Please take it from me, take it from me, take it from me. I don't want to feel the pain of my fallen nature, my wanting, needy nature. I don't want to feel this anymore. How many of you feel like that? I sure have. And then Jesus answers him, finally. 
finally, not right away, finally, Jesus says to him this, my grace, my favor, my loving kindness and mercy is enough for you, sufficient against any danger and enables you to bear the trouble of your fallen nature manfully. For my strength and power are made perfect, fulfilled and complete, and show themselves most effectively in your weakness. Therefore, Paul says, I will all the more gladly glory in my weakness and infirmity that the strength and power of Christ the Messiah may rest, yes, may pitch its tent over and dwell upon me. So, for the sake of Christ, I'm well pleased to uh, take pleasure in my infirmities, insults, hardships, persecutions, perplexities, distresses. For when I'm weak in human strength, then I'm truly strong, able, powerful in His divine strength. You see, friends, this is a phenomenal, powerful mystery. And it is essential that you learn it. It is so important, lest you be exalted above measure by the great revelation of His holy, heavenly life in you, and you start thinking more of yourself than you ought to. No, my friends, we need to always walk in that sweet, holy submission of the nature of Jesus in us, that loving dependence, that He demonstrated in His submission to the Father, that eternal Spirit by which He offered Himself to the Father without blemish in His suffering, that while He suffered the pains of our sin in His own body on the tree, He loved the Father and said, into thine hands I commit my spirit. And the glory of God was able to unveil itself in that body of death as he was raised from death to life. And that same grace, that same glory of us sharing his heavenly life as well as the pains of death, of his death, is more essential than you can imagine to praise God, to glory God. Friends, it's not just when you're on the mountaintop in the glory of His presence, experience the fullness of the Spirit in the conscious knowledge of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in you, but it's when you're in the valley of the weak pains of your body of flesh down here that you can weep with gratitude and say, Your grace, Your grace, Your grace, Your grace is more than enough for me, for I know I am what I am by Your grace alone. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a good day.